had one alcoholic drink tonight. You know, at one restaurant in New York, this can actually happen. Take a look. If you're here at Peddler's in Clifton Park dining with your children and you're the parent driving home, you'll get a notification like this telling you you can only have one alcoholic drink. Are you excited about the track? Oh, yes. Are you going? Yes, yep. we are. Melissa Gravel, general manager at Peddler's, gearing up for a busy summer, but not forgetting a policy she says is very close to her heart. We love children. Everybody loves children, and children don't have a voice. That's one of the reasons Gravel says the restaurant limits how much alcohol those dining with children can have. If you're the adult driving yourself and a child or children home, you are only allowed to have one alcoholic drink. I could never live with myself knowing that I killed somebody driving. Could never do that. So, and it's a choice that you can avoid. Longtime Peddler's bartender Cheryl Foss says most times it's an easy policy to enforce. I'm Tal Henrik, and our next guest is Limor Blockman, a sexologist. Limor, what's the topic we're discussing today? Well, we're always talking about, you know, what women go through postpartum, what is going on after giving birth, sexuality is hindered, a lot of difficulties come across women that give birth. But nobody really considers the, the other side, the co-partners, the husbands, or the, you know, the female partners of women that give birth. Are they going through a certain process as well? Yes, of course, definitely. And for that reason, uh, the researchers took interest and gathered 114 people. 95 of them were men, but 18 were women. One was uh, uh, unspecified. I don't know what to relate <laughs> to it. But they actually asked them, how do you feel about your wife, your partner giving birth? And they asked him as well a very specific question. Is something in your wife's anatomy is a problem for you now after giving birth? A very specific question. Well, of course, uh, the results were very interesting. They said that uh, there is a very big shift in sexuality after the giving birth, and that the, the reason for it was not different, was not necessarily um, medical or you know specifically physical, but it had to do with a lot of things that you know come across as uh, um, uh, something that troubles you. You wake up a lot at night. So you're it's worried. Stress, it's sleep. It's stress. It's the fact that you have to take care of someone new. In your, uh, in your realm, the fact that your wife is getting a lot of attention to a new partner, a lot of them stated that. Come on, grow up. Yeah, That's well, what I'm saying. Well, no, <laughs> not necessarily, but definitely it impa impacted them. And the, something additionally that they found is that the partner, the co-partner, was very influenced by the sexuality of his wife. In other words, if she encountered a lot of problems, he encountered a lot of problems, and there was a specifically 20% rise in erectile dysfunction postpartum for men. So I want to say that, you know, that it's definitely something that they need to take into account. Another thing that they assessed is that it doesn't matter the, 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 the nature of delivery. So it doesn't matter if it's a cesarean or an episiotomy or everything that has to do with it. Men were still bothered by yes, it. because it's also a personal feeling. Another, of a course. personal situation, the way you take it. Absolutely. And another thing that, that was, was mentioned many times was witnessing childbirth. A lot of men have a problem, and I want, I want to say to women that they need to have this conversation with their partner and to see because some men are not bothered by it, but a lot of men find it desexualizing for this area specifically. And they find, you know, it was approximately 7 to 10 percent that testified that this, is their, this was the result of it. And then there's something, you know, that they have to come out of or they, you know, go through a process of the, the Madonna yeah, horse sometimes syndrome. Sometimes you can't expect, you know, you don't know what to expect because a certain man could say, I want to go in and, and right. go in the room with you but and, should, and see it. But there's room for this conversa conversation, I want right. to say. But, you know, if we have a few minutes, I want to just, a, a few more minutes, I just want to say that someone can help you. Briefly. Briefly, someone can help you with this. And this is the staff, actually. And for this reason, they also conducted a study with um, uh, 29 nurses. And they assessed that if they go through a one-day training, they can mm -hmm. actually really enhance their ability to help these patients mm -hmm. and their partners. Lee well. Warren Blockman, thank you so much for this very inf informative, uh, you know, uh, you. survey that you brought us. Thank you. And now, imagine. Imagine this scenario. You're having dinner with your family at a restaurant. You order a drink, but the waiter tells you, sorry, sir, you've already had one alcoholic drink tonight. You know, at one restaurant in New York, this can actually happen. Take a look. 
If you're here at Peddlers in Clifton Park dining with your children and you're the parent driving home, you'll get a notification like this telling you you can only have one alcoholic drink. Are you excited about the track? Oh, yes. Are you going? Yes, yep. we are. Melissa Gravel, general manager at Peddlers, gearing up for a busy summer, but not forgetting a policy she says is very close to her heart. We love children. Everybody loves children, and children don't have a voice. That's one of the reasons Gravel says the restaurant limits how much alcohol those dining with children can have. If you're the adult driving yourself and a child or children home, you are only allowed to have one alcoholic drink. I could never live with myself knowing that I killed somebody driving. Could never do that. So, and it's a choice that you can avoid. Longtime peddler's bartender Cheryl Foss says most times it's an easy policy to enforce. We believe in it that much where, you know, you just politely explain the policy. And the nice thing is we explain it ahead of time. If you don't abide by the policy, you'll be asked to leave. Some waitresses taking the brunt of those who disagree. And they do get berated at the tables, um, and some come back very, very upset. But the managers go to the table and they explain we're not picking on parents. It's just something that we feel in our hearts is something that we can do in order to help. There you go. Enjoy. Many customers I found enjoying their meals had no problem with it. Well, I take the chance. Definitely. Doesn't make any sense. And that way, uh, keep those people off the road. I'm a former educator. I'm a retired educator. I think it's a great policy. Uh, when you think about the law, when you think about the responsibility that a parent has to protect their children. Judy Peck says the rule is comforting. I now have a great granddaughter and I would love to think that her parents could only have one drink and then be able to go and drive. Legally, the restaurant does have the right to enforce their rule. For the next item, let me read to you a Facebook post by Dwayne The Rock Johnson. That's what you should always start your day with, right, by the way. The Rock writes, I partnered with Apple to make the biggest, coolest, craziest, dopest, most over-the-top, funnest, is that even a word, movie ever. And I have the greatest co-star of all time, Siri. Now, do you want to see what he's talking about? Let's watch. This one's for Earth. This one is for Earth. Bingo. Boom. Love that one. Felt it. Yeah, felt good. Hey, Siri, read my schedule. You have 25 appointments at 715, oh, 720. Seven. They're on the telly. With so many projects in the works, it seems like Dwayne Johnson can't possibly take on any more. Oh, that sounds like a challenge. Hey, Dwayne, where are we going, buddy? Dwayne. Buddy. Hey, Siri, show me my life goals list. I found 10 reminders. Thank you very much. Hey, Siri, give me a Lyft ride to LAX. Lyft can get you a Lyft in 60 seconds. Mind if I drive? I know a shortcut. You're... Yeah. Uh... Hey, Siri, what's the temperature in Rome today? The high temperature for today in Rome will be 80 degrees, and the low will be 59 degrees. <laughs> Firefighters in California revived an unconscious dog by using an oxygen mask. The dog named Jack was caught in a residential fire, but was soon back on his feet, more or less, we should say, after firefighters applied a specialized animal oxygen mask to him. He was taken to a local clinic for treatment and is doing well being reunited with his owner. He may have helped his recovery. And coming up next, a live music performance right here on Trending. Israeli singer and songwriter Sarit Barkhan will join us right after the break. Don't go too far away.